Hello and welcome back my friends. So I'm getting ready to feed my worm bin, my worm farm this evening, and I thought, hey, this would be a great time for me to share with you some info on ways to keep your worm bin healthy, active, and alive throughout the winter months. As the temperatures begin to drop as we head into winter, it's crucial that we take care of our worms and keep our bin operating at a pleasant temperature. And I found an easy way to accomplish that is by simply placing a seedling heat mat in the bin. Now the larger the bin, you may need two of these heat mats. If you've got a smaller bin, you may need either a smaller heat mat or you can also buy a regulator controller that you plug this into and you can dial in the temperature. So you can actually bring down the heat a little bit that might be necessary. You don't want to overheat the bin. That can be detrimental just as the cold weather can. Now, most types of worms, specifically red wigglers, which are most commonly used in backyard worm bin worm farm setups, are going to thrive in temperatures between 55 and 75 degrees Fahrenheit. If ever your bin begins to drop below 40 degrees Fahrenheit, the worms will begin to die off, unfortunately. And the same thing goes for a bin that is consistently too hot. So 95 degrees Fahrenheit is where you're going to start to see mass exodus out of the bin, worms trying to escape, and again, even die off can occur. So we want to dial in the temperature by keeping our worm bins out of the sun throughout the summer months and then adding a little bit of heat like with the seedling heat mat to create little warm zones for them to thrive throughout the winter. And you can see the abundance of activity in this bin. Everything is doing extremely well. I try not to disturb the worms too much. And you can see how they've migrated over from the other half of this bin as well. We've got some beautiful finished castings on this side and it's virtually worm free. And that's because they've all migrated over to the other end of the bin where we're putting some fresh food in there for them. And if you're looking for an easy way to stay consistent with the feeding of your worms and also keep things nice and clean in the kitchen, this under counter compost bin that connects to the inside of your cupboard door works amazingly. Not only does it do a great job at keeping the smells down, but it keeps the fruit flies and the gnats away. And in this feeding, you can see we got some paper towels, potato skins, banana peels, some pomegranate shells, an old bell pepper, and even some whole eggshells. Although it's harder for the worms to break down a whole eggshell like that, eventually they get to it. But what I found with these whole eggshells is the worms love to congregate in and around them. So I just put them whole in the bin and we'll just cover that up. And I like to put a layer between the heat mat and the contents of the bin. Just keeps things clean and also allows for a little bit of a buffer so things don't get too hot. So this is sufficient for this bathtub size worm bin, just one seedling heat mat. It's not gonna heat the whole thing up, but it's gonna create a nice little warm zone. And then the worms will self-regulate exactly where they wanna hang out around the heat mat here. If you really want to get things dialed in, you can use a soil probe thermometer to check the temperature of the bedding, or even just check the different heat zones that you are creating in the bin. But all in all, this is a technique that I've been employing in my worm bin for quite some time. It's worked amazingly well. Prior to having this setup going, what would end up happening is my worm bin would get so cold that it would virtually stop all production. The worms would become dormant and I'm pretty sure I lost a few worms as well during that process. So again, this is just a great way to keep your worm bin active, and more importantly, take care of those worms. We've created an environment for them to live and to work in tandem with us, helping to break down our excess food waste from the kitchen. So it's our duty to take care of them and make sure that they have a good livelihood in the bin that we do create. So that's gonna do it for this video. And hey, if you enjoy tips, reminders like this, or you got something out of this video, do us a favor and smash that thumb button. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel. New uploads every week, sometimes every day. And I'm always giving you updates on all the different things going on around here. So with that, thank you all for watching. Have yourself a great rest of the weekend. Until next time, this is Dan from plantabundance.com. Take care, I'll be talking to you again soon.